Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of How to Feed the Beast in Minecraft. We're still working towards building our solar panels and for that we're going to need another Gregtech machine. The machine we're going to need is this, the Industrial Blast Furnace. Now this does have several uses in Gregtech, but specifically what we want it for is turning our silicon cells into silicon plates so we can make our solar panels. Don't let its small size fool you, this is only part of the machine, so let's go and have a look at how we build it. Ok so back to the workshop and over to the craft table and providing you've built all the machines that we've built in the previous videos you'll easily be able to make all the components you need. An advanced machine block in the middle, two induction furnaces at the bottom in either corner, two electrics or electronic circuits in the top two corners and you're going to need some cupronickel heating coils. Now these are made using the rolling machine and all you need is copper and nickel to make them and you get nickel by macerating uh, ferrous ore so you'll have to go mining to get some of that but they're quite easy to make once you have the ingredients and we put those in the remaining slots and we have ourselves an industrial blast furnace which as you can see is a medium voltage machine so let's take that what you're also going to need are 34 standard machine casings again quite easy to make with the machines that we have at the moment you're also going to need for this as well two buckets of lava so make sure you find those before you start let's head outside Okay, so the reason I've come out here is the industrial blast furnace is actually a larger machine than a single block. It's one of the multi-block machines. So I'm going to build it outside in this clearing. As you can see here, I have a fully charged MFE running on a bank of six generators and I will explain why later on. So let's build the basis for the industrial blast furnace to begin with. We need to take our standard blast casing or machine casing and we need to lay out on the ground a 3x3 block and make sure that the middle one is filled in as well so that is the size that our industrial blast furnace is going to be and this needs to be four high now the middle two blocks on the second and third rows need to be empty for this to work so if we leave this block empty and then build up the next level and leave that empty it will be absolutely fine but what we are going to do is we're going to take our two buckets of lava and we're going to fill that middle space with a bucket of lava i'll explain why in a moment let's build the second level be careful when you're building this not to fall into the uh, lava it is easily done and I've done it myself so there we go let's fill that one in with a lava block as well and then we're going to take the remaining nine uh, machine casing blocks and fill in the spaces so like I said you can leave those middle blocks empty but I'm going to explain why we've put the lava in there so we now take our industrial blast furnace and the rules for this are it must go along the bottom it must go in the middle and the front must be facing outward so providing we're facing the blast furnace if we drop it down there it's facing us it's in the right place I'm going to quickly get rid of those buckets and take my glass fiber cables and from the output on the MFE let me just hold shift so that it actually drops the cable output from the MFE I'm going to move the cable over here and connect it up to our industrial blast furnace now you can see here we have a heat capacity of 1520k. By default the industrial blast furnace using the standard uh, machine casings only has an output or a heat capacity of 1020. Putting those two lava blocks in the middle increases the heat capacity by an extra 500. This means that the machine can not only work faster but it means it can work on some of the higher end metals as well. But it'll do for what we need which is our silicon cells. Now the reason I have it connected to its own MFE, apart from the fact that the other one's inside and it's easier to reach this one, to work this machine requires 128 EU per tick and if it's not receiving that amount of power it won't work. It will still siphon off any power that's being produced but if it's not getting the full 128 EU it won't work. So having a dedicated supply of power is what you really need here. So if we go into the interface, we've got two input slots because some recipes do require 
uh, multiple ingredients, but all we want to do is take our silicon cells, which we made last episode, and it requires two at a time. If we pop two in, you can see it's starting to work. Let's give that a few seconds. And there you have it. As a result, we have our silicon plate, which we can use to make our solar panels. It also returns two empty cells, which we can put back into our industrial centrifuge with some redstone to make some more silicon cells. And we are now ready to begin building our solar panels. So thanks again for watching guys and I hope as always that you found this video entertaining and useful. If you have, please like, share and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for anything you'd like to see in future videos, if there's a particular machine or item that you'd like to see me build and demonstrate, please send me a message or leave it in the comments below and I can work on that for you next time. So until then, goodbye.